differences between mean, mode, and median. We'll just talk about it. Um, in this class, we don't want to get to uh, too uh, complicated stuff. So, uh, median, there is a way to calculate median, but here we don't want to talk about it. So, in this case, uh, in terms of calculation, okay, uh, only this one is possible, right? But mean has several. One is trimmed mean, okay? So you cut some other data, trim mean. And the other one is arithmetic mean. And another one is geometric mean. So when you talk about all these, as you know, it will be affected by outliers. So if some number are too big, some number are too small, then you can see, you know, uh, you will distort, okay, the true picture. You will distort. You will distort the true picture of the data. So, uh, but in any case, this one is the most is the used most often. Okay, uh, most often, we oftentimes use this one, and it is arithmetic mean. Okay, then we want to get to. Another one. First, we talk about central tendency, and this one we're going to talk about dispersion. Okay, so it is dispersion. Okay. The first one is range. What means range? It is very easy. So you get your data, right? The highest number, so range is equal to the maximum number minus the minimum number. So the highest number minus the lowest number. But you know, this is gonna be a big problem because there are a lot of difference in this data, right? So let us say you have 50 students, okay? And you want to know, What's the range? You can get, say, you know, the range of the score of this class. So you get the highest number minus the lowest number. So let us say the highest number is 100, okay? And the lowest number, let us say, unfortunately, it is zero. And so you get the whole range is 100. Does that tell you anything about the data? No, because you only use two numbers. There are, say, 50 students, though, so there should be 50 scores. But how many score you use? You only use two. So the others, you have no idea. So this cannot tell you a true picture, okay? So let me show you, you know, so let us say we have this kind of distribution. We have zero, uh, we have uh, someone get zero, right? And someone get 100, so the range is here. Okay, but it may be that all of the people, say 50, uh, 49 of the people get 100 and one person gets zero, right? And so this is one possibility. And the other possibility may be that it is something like this. Okay, so in, this, in these two cases, okay, the range is always 100, right? But you know the difference is very big, okay? So sometimes we use a different kind of concept. So we use this is called okay. So in this case you divide the data into four portions. And so range is this number subtracted by that number. And what about quartile range? Okay, this is quartile range. It is equal to Q3 minus Q1. So this is Q1, this is Q2, and this is Q3. So Q3 minus Q1. But the same kind of uh, problem, right? Because you have so many data, but you only use two points here. One point here and one point there. So it's not quite enough. Okay.
So let us get to a different kind. Okay, so in this case you can tell very easily these two data, right, these two probability distribution, they may have the same range, okay, they may have the same range because the highest number may be the same, lowest number may be the same, but you know the distribution, which one in terms of deviation? Which one is higher, okay, in terms of deviation? So let us say this is distribution A and this is distribution B. Which one deviates more? The second one, right, the B. B deviates more. So even though they have same range, maybe they even have the same quartile range, you know. But, uh, but of course in this case the quartile range won't be the same because uh, this one is more widespread, okay, more widespread, so TVA more. So this clearly tells you that these two numbers are not good numbers, okay, they cannot tell you exactly what the picture are, because the true pictures for A is this, for B is this. These two pictures are actually different, uh, even though they may have the same kind of range or even quartile range. Okay, so what else do we get? We may also try to find out the absolute value of any point between the mean, okay? So because you can get whatever data you have, right? And this is the mean, okay? This is the mean. And so you try to find out, okay, uh, x1, what's the difference between x bar, x2, x3, xn, etc. And you try to find them out, okay? find out what's the difference and then add them together, okay? So let us say you find out whatever difference they have, right? So because we talk about range, range is the difference between the highest number and the lowest number. So you get only that. And quartile range, you get Q1 and Q3 and get a difference. So in any case, you only measure two points. And because in this case, we have M points, so you want to know as many points as you can. So we have from point 0.1, point 0.2, up to point n. And we try to find out the difference between that number and the mean, okay? Suppose we add them up, okay, what do you get? If we add them up, what do you get? Can anyone tell me? It should be easy. Can anyone tell me if you add all these numbers up, what do you get? Okay, let's try. So in this case, we have summation. Uh, oftentimes when I put down this formula like this, actually what does that mean? That means it is from one, from i is equal to one, two, n. Okay, so sometimes I will forget about this part and I'll forget about this part because it is simpler to put it down that way. So you want to remember uh, what that is, okay? So in this case, we have summation i is equal to 1 and n, okay, and xi. And because this is addition, okay, this is addition, they add together, right? But, okay, uh, in this case it's subtraction, okay, subtraction. So, uh, actually I can do this. I can put this part and factor them out, I get this. And for this, it will be easy, right? It is simply x1 plus x2 plus xn, right? And in this case, what does this mean? I add the same numbers. I add the same numbers n times, okay? So the first one is x bar, right? The second one is also x bar. And the last one is also x bar. How many do I have? 
I have n x bar, okay? And so what is this? Actually, I can do, what I can do is steal do them here, right? And what is x bar? As you know, x bar is equal to 1 over n, okay, 1 over n, and then summation xi, right? Okay? So then I have n times x bar, right? And x bar is equal to 1 over n summation xi, okay? So as a matter of fact, I sh should simply dip this item here. So what you get? This is summation xi, and this is also summation xi. So what do I get? Zero here. So in this case, you try to find out, okay? You try to find out uh, what's the dispersion for each point, okay? From each point and to the mean, okay? To the mean. But can you get it? No, you cannot. So another way to adjust it is to do this. You take absolute value, right? You take absolute value, okay? And then you add them up, summation, okay? So you do this. Because if you don't have this kind of, uh, if you don't have the absolute value here, then what you get is actually zero. So whatever you get, I mean, whatever you do, you don't get anything. So in this case, you want to measure the different, the distance, okay? The distance from each point to the mean, okay? Then you're gonna take absolute value, okay? What else? There are some other way, okay? Let us introduce variance and standard deviation. And as I said before, what is standard deviation? Standard deviation is standard, we oftentimes put it as standard STD, okay? And deviation DEV is equal to square root of variance, okay? Square root of variance. And now, uh, let's discuss, okay, introduce what is variance and what's standard deviation. What's the formula here? The same thing, we have uh, sample variance and population variance. Okay, sample variance. And also uh, population And what is this? Okay. So this is, and now we are talking about, you know, we haven't uh, put into probability function because we haven't got to that yet. So we always assume, you know, there are n data, okay? So we, what the data you have is x1 to xn, okay? That's for the sample. And for the data, we have x1 up to xn, okay? And so what is the uh, variance? Variance is equal to, in terms of symbol, that's notation, it is sigma x squared, okay? Sigma. This is a Greek letter. We call it sigma, okay, sigma. Sigma x squared is equal to 1 divided by n, okay, summation xi minus mu x squared, okay? And what about sample? Sample variance, it will be sx squared, okay, sx squared, and is equal to 1 over n minus 1. You've got to remember, it is 1 over n minus 1. And uh, 
summation x i okay minus x bar squared. So this is the the formula for this. The reason we use it is because as we uh, as we have just seen, if we use this number, right? If we if we use this formula, what do we get? We get zero. We don't get anything. Okay. And so if we use absolute value, okay, it works. Okay, we can see something because it measures the difference of the data point, each of the data point from the mean. But in this case, because it is absolute value, it is very hard to calculate, especially because sometimes we want to use differentiation. Sometimes we want to use integration. So that's differentiation. Differentiation. Or even sometimes we just want to take square root or whatever, OK? What is differentiation? Differentiation is, OK? So if you want to uh, use differentiation, you won't get any result at x bar because it's not differentiable when x is equal to x bar. So you want to review some of the calculus here. So anyway, uh, there are a lot of reasons we use variance and not all the other terms that we use, uh, we just discussed. But in any case, this is the formula we're going to use. Okay? And there is a way to simplify the formula. Okay? So let us try to see what is the way to simplify the formula. So let's look at this formula first, okay? Let's look at this formula. So sigma squared, that is the variance, right? The variance is equal to n over 1 summation xi minus mu x squared, okay? And what is this term equal to? We're going to expand, expand. We're going to expand this formula, OK? We expand it. So it is going to be xi squared, right? Minus 2 times xi minus mu x, OK? And plus, what should be this term here? It should be mu x squared, right? OK? Any questions so far? OK. And since this notation is just summation, right? Add them together. So I can, uh, you know, factor them out. So I'll put this one in. So then I can get to this part. N over, uh, 1 over N is always here, OK? And then what do I get? I, get, I can get summation xi squared, OK? And minus 2 summation xi mu x. OK, and plus summation mu x squared. Any questions so far? Any questions? OK. Just try to remind you, this is from i is equal to 1 to n, big N, right? OK. So this one is still here, OK? And this one is a constant. This one is a constant. It's just a number because you can calculate the mean. So the mean may be 5, 3, whatever. So actually, this one is a constant. That means when I say, OK, because in this case, I will change this from x1, x2, x3, et cetera, right? Well, if I change this, will this one change? No, it will not change because this one is not affected by this I, okay? So I can take this out, okay? I can take this out. So factor this out. I have 2 mu x times summation xi, okay? And plus, what should be here? I have 1, 2, 3, up to n, right? So I have n 
mu x squared. Okay? Any questions so far? Okay. So now let me use the space here. Okay. So I have 1 over n summation x i square. Can anyone tell me what is this? Adding all the numbers, right? And what is this? Mu x is actually 1 over n and summation xi, right? So in this case, summation xi is equal to n times mu x, okay? So this one is actually n times mu x. So let me put that down. So it is minus 2 mu x times n mu x plus n mu x squared. Okay? So you have mu x and mu x, so you get mu x squared, right? So you have minus 2n mu x squared plus n mu x squared. So what do you get? You get 1 over n summation x i squared minus and mu x squared. So you want to try, okay? Try on your own to see that sx squared, the variance of the sample is 1 over n minus 1 and summation xi minus x bar squared, right? What should that be? That should be n minus 1, okay, here, and then Summation xi squared minus n x bar squared. So you want to try on your own to see if you can get this result. Okay? Any questions so far? Any questions? Okay. So there is another way to try to measure, okay, the spreadness, okay, the dispersion of the data. It is called is called coefficient of variation. So coefficient is this, and variation is this, okay? So coefficient of variation. Oftentimes we put CV here, and that is equal to sigma x. So that's the standard deviation of the sample or the data, okay? And here that's mu x. So when you want to compare two sets of data, okay, you want to compare two sets of data, and you want to know which one is more uh, dispersed than the other, okay, which one is more dispersed than the other, then you want to use this formula, okay. So if this number is bigger, that means it is more dispersed, okay, so, uh, you know, the data spread out more than the other. Okay, any questions? Any questions? So far, so good. So we are done with descriptive statistics. So we are now get to chapter three. That's probability. So probability. You know, the reason people study probability uh, is kind of interesting because it's related to What is gambling? Gambling. Okay. And what's the often, I mean, what's the most ordinary kind of gambling?
What is a dice? A dice is this. Sometimes they say cast. Cast a dice or throw a dice, okay? And when you throw a dice, what's the probability you're going to win? So let us say, uh, if you get uh, one, okay, if you get one, then you're going to win. So what's the probability you're going to win? It is one six, okay, one six. So this is one, this is one half or one second. And this is one third. This is one fourth. This is one fifth. Okay, so you want to know how to read the fraction. Fraction, okay, so these are all fractions. Okay. Anyway, we don't want to get to too much details of the history uh, of probability. But generally, you kind of figure out uh, the reason that people interested in probability is that they want to know what's the chance they're going to win, okay? But of course, if you gamble, well, you win. You will never win, okay? I have been to Las Vegas several times. You know Las Vegas, right? That's a gambling city. and. The gambling city also called Sin City. What is Sin? Anyway, um, you know, oftentimes when it get to this point, I can say some jokes, you know. But anyway, I don't think you will get it. So um, let us try. Okay, let us try. Uh, the most uh, usual kind that we know in Taiwan is. Lottery, right? Okay, lottery. So um, I think it is on every Friday and uh, every Tuesday, is that right? That they uh, want to draw the numbers, okay? They draw the numbers. And so what's the chance you're going to win? Is there are 42 numbers, right? 42 numbers, okay? So what's the probability you're going to win? How many numbers it is drawn? They drawn how many numbers? They draw, they draw six numbers, okay? From one to 42. Okay, and after they draw one ball, what do they do? Do they return the ball into the can? I, I mean, it is called draw without replacement. Okay, of course sometimes we draw and we put it back, right? Sometimes we draw, put it back. So that's called draw with replacement, okay? Of course if you draw it and don't replace it, the probability will be different, okay? So now let us try. So what's your lucky number? Let us say it's seven, okay? You draw seven. Okay, so then there are how many numbers left? 41 numbers left, right? So let us say you want to get 10. So what's the probability that you're going to get seven? It is one forty second, right? And say, what would be the next number? Say 10. What's the probability? It is 1 over 41, because there's 41 numbers left. So, et cetera. So, if uh, it is draw without replacement, you know. The next number, the probability is going to be higher, okay? The next, prob the next one going to occur will be higher. But let us say it is draw, okay, with replacement, okay, with replacement. So, what? is the chance you're going to get 10. 1, 40 second. And it will be always the same because the pool, okay, the pool, that means the whole number, okay, all of the numbers there will be the same, okay. So let us try to talk about, you know, how to describe the whole situation. Of course, in this case, we want to use set. 
What is a set? Okay, a set. And of course, in probability, we talk about different things. Okay, so we say, uh, in this case, okay, we use lottery as the example. Okay, we talk about what are the possibilities. How many possibilities? How many possibilities? The possibilities is from 1, 2, 3, up to 42, right? So this is our sample space. OK, our sample space. OK, there are the numbers there, OK? And whatever data, whatever number being drawn, that we call an event. But of course this is kind of different because when we talk about lottery, how many numbers do we need? We need to have six numbers, right? But let us say we are only interested in one number. So uh, the simple space will be different, okay? So in this case, anyway, we say we don't, we're just interested in one number. And then we have 42 numbers, okay? We have 42 numbers. So is it possible to get 43? No. So then, oftentimes we use P to denote probability, okay? So when we say P, it means probability. So probability X is equal to 43. What's this probability? the probability is equal to zero, right? It won't occur. And so some events, some events may be simple. Some event may be compound, okay? So what means compound? So that means, in this case, for any kind of simple event, only one thing occur, only, only one thing occur. And for the compound event, that means two things occur. So let us say, you wanna know, what's the chance that one and two can be drawn? If you are interested just one number can be drawn, that's a simple event, okay? If several things, that is several events put together, okay? Several numbers put together, that will be compound events. And of course, uh, this, sometimes we put it S. So this is sample space, okay? Sample space. Let's talk about uh, something here. Say, cast a coin. If you cast a coin, what are the possibilities out there? You can see head or you can see tail. So what is head? Head is and tail is, okay? So this will be your sample space because there are only two possibilities, head and tail, okay? But let us say if you cast a die, right? If you cast a die, a dice, if you cast a dice, then there will be six possibility, right? So the sample space, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And let us say you wanna cast a coin twice. If you're gonna cast a coin twice, How many possibilities are there if you cast the coin twice? The first is head, the second is head, right? And the first head, the second tail, the first tail, the second tail, the first tail, the second head. Okay, so you have head, head, okay, head, tail, and tail, head, and tail, tail. 
So this will be your sample space. Okay, this will be your sample space. See what else. And oftentimes when we talk about uh, what we try, okay, say we cast a coin, okay, that would be called an experiment. Okay, an experiment. And also in this experiment, we have two possibilities. In this experiment, we have six possibilities. In this experiment, we have four possibilities. And of course, we want to relay the possibility uh, to all these kind of, I mean probability, to all these experiments. And so, let us try it here. Let us use this one as an example. A simple event, maybe say p x is equal to 1, okay, or p x is equal to 2, and etc. That's a simple event because we just uh, want to know, uh, you know, what's the chance 1 going to occur, okay, or 2 going to occur. But sometimes we will be interested in several issues, okay, when something happened together. So let us say p x is equal to odd number. Okay? So, in this case, how many odd numbers in this experiment? How many odd numbers? You have p x is equal to 1 or x is equal to 3 or x is equal to Five, okay? Because either that's one, three, or five, okay, they are all odd numbers in this experiment. Okay? So what is this event? This is a compound event because you look at several numbers together. And so what would be the possibility? I mean probability. The probability would be one six plus one six plus one six so what do you get? you get one half okay so uh, basically what we talk about here are kind of simple you should uh, any questions? any questions? okay and then because we talk about set right because this is th set theory so uh, we want to talk about some operations or calculation uh, that involve sets. This is a big set. Oftentimes, we call this one universal set. So what is this? It means this is the sample space. Whatever possibilities the, it is here, okay? All the outcomes of the experiments, it is here. So it is called universal set. Of course, in this universal set, there are some subsets. Okay, there are some subsets. What means subsets? It is smaller than that, right? And it is whatever uh, in here, okay? In this, in this case, it's just here, uh, whatever it is. In any case, it is smaller than this universal set. And so now let us look at this picture. We have A here, okay? We have B here. So this is A, this is B, right? What is this part? This part is A intersects B, okay, A intersects B. And what about this? The whole thing, it is A union B, okay, so this is intersect. And this is union. A intersect B, A union B. And so in this case, uh,
we will be interested in you know, uh, all these cases, right? A may represent a certain events, B may represent a certain events, and uh, we, we are interested, you know, uh, what's the probability, okay, what's the probability that A will happen and also B will happen, and or, in this case, A or B happen. So we have uh, several kind of interests, and uh, so let us say, uh, if you take this class, if you take statistics, very likely you will also take economics, okay? The reason is that uh, generally, uh, because uh, in Taiwan, if you just get a college degree, okay, if you just graduate from university, still, uh, you know, the opportunity for you will be kind of limited. And also, you know, uh, for a college graduate, the salary you get is not quite enough. So a lot of people, they will um, try to, uh, let us say, you know, get to uh, get a master degree. So if you take statistics, more or less, you will be more likely to take economics because these two courses are in the entrance exam for most schools. So, you know, in any case, we will be interested in a lot of things. But in terms of stocks, so let us say you buy technology stock, okay? If you buy technology stocks, usually you won't buy the traditional industries, okay? Because these two kind of uh, uh, stocks, okay, the performance is kind of different. And of course, you know, technology stocks, oftentimes what they emphasize is growth, okay? What means growth? That means the stock prices more likely to increase, okay? The stock price is more likely to increase. Anyway. When we put down this, does that mean they will necessarily intersect each other? Of course, in this case, there will be elements, okay? Elements. What is elements? Okay, in this case, of course, there is elements here, right? But sometimes it may be like this. So there is no intersection, right? There's no intersection. So in this case, A intersect B is equal to, what is this? This is empty set. Empty means Okay. Okay, and of course, uh, in terms of the uh, whatever set we talk about, really we are interested in numbers. So how do we denote the numbers? So we say, okay, uh, A intersect B. In this case, it is a set. Okay, it is a set, and also uh, you what you put down. Okay, are the elements. But generally, we just interested how many elements are there in this intersection. So we put n to denote the number. Okay. So let me give you some example here. So A, let us say, is uh, the dice, okay? X, okay? Then X is equal to one, two, three, right? Okay? And let us say B is equal to X, and then is X is equal to two, four, six, okay? So in this case, what is A intercept B? In A intercept B is equal to 2, right? And in terms of number, how many elements in this case? There's only one. I think it's about time, so we will continue next week. <laughs>